Yeah, so this is my church. Uh, it's the Redeemed Christian Church of God Jubilee Christian Center. It's in Coventry in the UK. And um, we recently upgraded our sound system. I've been trying to, uh, we've been trying to put this together for a while now. Um, our audio and visual systems have been more than 10 years old and they've been due for replacement. We replaced our old mixer, which was the Roland V Mixer M400. I've used it in my compressor and Git video. And we changed that to the Behringer wing, got uh, the S32 stage bus to max, match, and um, a couple of P16 M personal monitors for our musicians. So I spent the last few days putting it together. And this is a very short video just to show like an overview of the system, how I made my connections. Let's just jump right into it. Yep. So the kind of music we do here is a mix of um, contemporary gospel songs, the Bethel, Hill Song, Maverick City kind of stuff, and uh, African praise. So we do lots of dancing and praise stuff. Um, so the kind of our bands generally consist of keyboards. We have two keyboard rigs consisting of two keyboards each. And then we have the bass, the lead, and the drummer. And occasionally we have talking drums, just yeah, kind of African things. Uh, I just want to show you uh, all of that and half pull that together um so let's just check it out so we have our keyboards here we have two keyboards this is definitely keys two for the auxiliary um sounds and this is our main keyboard uh the montage eight is the main keyboard this is the auxiliary we usually have this roland keyboard as part of the auxiliary then the motif es7 the one here is stacked on top of this one but we have an issue with the stand at the moment for the main keys rig so this is off the side uh, for our musicians, uh, the, the cable work is not yet properly done, but we have talkback microphones here for the uh, keyboardist, and then we have their personal monitor P16. They prefer that we put them on the uh, keyboard as opposed to a stand. The space is not too much, and they are pretty fine with this situation. We have here um, this uh, amplifier for the guitar player. Uh, we occasionally have that for now and then we have the bass guitar amp and speaker combo we have a di box on top i'll just go in, uh, into that in a moment we have another i don't know why this is bent anyway but we have another top back here for the bass guitar player and these are drum um sets enclosing a in a drum shield just so we could keep the noise on stage um, pretty quiet and have everything come from the mixer to the speakers. I won't go into speakers much now. I'll probably do that in uh, another video because I'm still working on that, trying to maybe do some system and uh, design to get the speaker placement right and to do some uh, tuning of the system. And afterwards, uh, I'll get to show all of that. All of these are routed and connected to, yeah, we have a Kunga here. We have a little bit of a mess here, but yeah, we're working on it. All of these are routed to the, uh, this are rack here. The top is our microphones. All our microphones are wireless for the singers. And um, this here is for the talking drum. That's a talking drum on the floor. We don't want to use it, we just place it here. And uh, he uses this monitor. Yeah, so we have our S32, S32 stage bus here for all our connections. The amp is not on because we're not using it for now. I all of the speakers uh, I replaced to active speakers and um, the speaker management system uh, I didn't put it to use because I routed all of my speakers through matrices and did the processing from there from the board now uh, for our drum kit the drum has um, three wrap toms as opposed to the traditional two wrap toms and the floor tom so I have 11 micro microphones set up here on the drums. We have two here for the kick. A kick in is inside and then a kick out. I have two as well for the snare. I have a snare top and a snare bottom. I use the SM57 uh, for the snare top and the snare bottom. I have um, each individual mic for the rack tom. So two kick, two snare, that's four. Uh, and four toms, three rack and um, one uh, floor tom. That's eight mics already. We have a hi-hat microphone. Uh, I think that's the Shaw SM137. Uh, it's a condenser microphone and then two overhead, but all condenser microphones. That's a level microphones and uh, all of them are connected to the stage box. I will have a separate video on my drum uh, miking situation and how it sounds. I still need, we still need to work on the drums and change the drum heads and just do a couple of work. This is first time I'm testing this system, system and I probably will give you an idea of how it sounds although not yet great because we still need to do a couple of work for the bass i have um the bass 
connected to the uh, amp. The amp has a, uh, a DI built into it, but I'm not using it because the DI is post EQ and I don't want to mix off of what the, the EQ that the bass player has set. So what I've done is I've used this DI box here. This is the, uh, it's an H channel uh, active DI from Behringer. And um, yeah, so I connected the bass directly to this DI here and I kind of linked it uh, from the DI to the amp. So the bass guitar is almost as if it's connected directly to the amp. And then I'm getting the a direct output here with the clean bass sound to my stage balls and then to my mixer. So I'm mixing the bass and the uh, bass player is doing what he wants on stage and I'm mixing a clean bass. Why I opted for this eight channel DI as opposed to maybe single DI for each instrument is because you just need to have one of these on stage and you can do anything. For example, uh, this is uh, a connection for a computer for maybe loop or playback or something like that on stage. They do that. Uh, musician use uh, loop or some click track a couple of times and it's very easy. I can have that here. Uh, I like from uh, the back to the stage monitor to the yeah to the uh, stage box and off to the mixer. And if I have any other thing uh, unbalanced input, I want to plug on stage. I have channels here or the DI that I can use for it rather than putting a bunch of DI on stage. For the lead guitar arm, for example, depending on the style of music we want to do and the situation, maybe we'll have a concert or anything. And if the player wants the amp to be mic'd, then I have a microphone for it that I just hit here. So this um, is the Sennheiser E606 for micing the amp, if that's the style of music I want to do. Or I can take this out if the lead guitar player prefers direct, then I can take this out, plug it behind the DI box I have here and plug the guitar directly to the DI box. So that works as well. And uh, for the keys, uh, my keys rig, the first key, since we're using only one keyboard at the moment, it has a balanced output connection. So I just I just connected it. Others are a TRS is balanced cable uh, straight down. Uh, for this, we I have to mix both of these sounds on stage, so I'll just get one output, one left and right output for my keys. And what I've done is, I've taken the output here for the top keys and the bottom keys, and I've sent them to a small mixer I have here. So this is why I combine both sounds, uh, just dialing the, the gain and the level right so that both the sounds can come out equally to this mixer. And then from here, I don't know why the focus is, is bad now, uh, from here I send it to the stage box. Uh, whenever you want to combine signals, audio signals, you use a mixer for it. But for splitting audio signals, you can just split it from cable and uh, just use a cable splitter. But for combining, it's always advisable to use uh, a mixer no matter how small it is. Um, we have a second one of these uh, where we, uh, we do the same thing for the keyboard one if we have both keyboards stacked together. At the moment, this Roland Phantom is not connected. Um, so I just connected this directly to Stagebox and that's it. Now, one challenge we've always had with mixing a front of house is the fact that the mixer is here in a separate acoustic space from the main church. So I always have to pop my head out of this door just to find out um, uh, how the system sounds in front of house and come back in to make adjustments. But with this wing, uh, we have the Copilot app here in this iPad where I can make um, uh, adjustments remotely. So I can be in the main um, church and hear how things sounds like in the room while making adjustments with the iPad. So I think it's a win for me and I'm excited about it. For monitoring, the band uses the P16M personal monitor mixer. So the monitor off of their headphones. I don't have a wedge for them here on, on stage and it helps keep the stage volume to a very low level. The singers on the other hand, they have wedges in front of them, kind of like the traditional auxiliary mix uh, we have. So everyone is happy and I'm excited to test out the setup today. Uh, the way I was able to do sound check because I was setting up up until late yesterday evening when the choir came for rehearsal. So I just gave them like a rough mix and asked everyone to sing and jam, had a proper jam from them, which I recorded, had a multi-track recording of. And after they left, 
had to play everything back on the individual channels and mix it to a point where I was happy with it for today. Uh, what I didn't take into account though was micro microphone feedback issues because I missed the uh, vocals and everything uh, from the recording. And it's quite different when they're singing it live because I have to take feedback issues into account. I think I should be able to, uh, I, I should be fine and just fix a really little issue this morning when the worship starts. And yeah, I'm excited to test it out. I have a couple of other videos coming up while probably going to details of my setup, my drum mix, everything else. And I'm excited for those.